Amal Fati. Now, in this short talk, I want to address what Amal Fati is really about, where it's really leading us. It isn't just as we are, you know, accustomed to believe for those who are in the know about Nietzsche that it's just love of fate, love everything that happens to you as if there was no way out. No, there is another, and that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful thought in itself to ex- to accept who we are, that we're fundamentally limited beings, and that we're fundamentally mortal beings. So that what it has to do with the Amor Fati is obviously death, our mortality, is that we will die, and that we still say yes to that. But there is another layer, um, a very deep, very profound. Dimension to the Amor Fati, which has to do with the eternal recurrence of the same, and the eternal recurrence of the same is absolutely not a thought experiment. It's something very real. It's something that we can experience if we are open to a very radically different temporality, a temporality that doesn't exist in a post-Cartesian, post-Kantian, and post-Newtonian world of calculation. Where time is nothing but a parameter、uh, that we can measure and use to fly to the moon and use airplanes, etc. Now, let me first begin with Nietzsche, what he has to say in the Gay Signs in section 276 on Amor Fati. This is I'm quoting from Nietzsche now. I want to learn more and more to see as beautiful what is necessary in things. Then I shall be one of those who makes things beautiful, amor fati. Let that be my love henceforth. I do not want to wage war against what is ugly. I do not want to accuse. I do not even want to accuse those who accuse. Looking away shall be my only negation. And all in all, on the whole, some day I wish to be only a yes sayer. And in Ecce Homo. In section ten, Nietzsche says, "My formula for greatness in a human being is amor fati, that one wants nothing to be different, not forward, not backward, not in all eternity. Not merely bear what is necessary, still less conceal it. All idealism is mendacity in the face of what is necessary, but love it." And I think the second one. That second section is even more important, probably, than the first one. The first one is an introduction to that thought, and it becomes clearer what he means by it when we turn to the section on the eternal recurrence of the same. But in the Ekehomo section, it is clear that what Nietzsche is about here is eternity, and the eternal recurrence of the same deals with eternity, but on a very different level on how we usually think of eternity. We think of eternity as either time passing by forever, that there are infinite now states that just flow and flow and flow forever from future into the present moment into the past, etc. Or we think of eternity as a circle that every everything is just circularly repeating itself. And people usually think of the eternal recurrence of the same as a circle, which it isn't. And then. You could also think of eternity just in the way you know of the scholastics as a standing now a nunc stands, but that's not it either. It is an ecstatic eternity that appreciates finitude. There is eternity for finite beings that we are. We can eternally exist, and we will have existed forever once we ha- will have died. That is the kind of amor fati, that kind of love of fate. But there's even something else going on in the eternal recurrence of the same. We do realize something, namely, and this is with Heidegger, that there is a necessity to make every blink of an eye, every lo- every moment, every augenblick, to a greatest moment. That there is a deep responsibility in everything. The eternal recurrence of the same, just like the amor fati. Is Nietzsche's attempt to overcome nihilism, which is the disease of the Occident in the twentieth 
actually already in the 19th century, the 20th century, and especially in the 21st century. We are living through nihilism. We are living through empty consumerism, a state of history-lessness where nothing seems to really matter and everything is sort of indifferent. We search and we destroy or we don't find meaning. We cannot seem to create proper meaning that is way beyond us, ourselves, and our small little lives. But the Amor Fati and the eternal recurrence of the same attempt to sh give us exactly that. They attempt to give us a way out of and beyond nihilism. And how do they do that? And first of all, we need to get clear on what the eternal recurrence of the same is not. It's not a thought experiment where all you do is you think about, oh, what would be if I had to live this life again? Well, then I'd better make the most of it and live each day like it is my last, etc., yada, yada. That's not what it is. The eternal recurrence of the same isn't a thought experiment. It is how metaphysics finally comes to grasp, to grips with time itself, with it, how it ecstatically moves and bursts out of itself. And we are, of course, trapped in a Newtonian, Kantian world where time doesn't have that meaning for us, right? We, we are used to time being linear or, at best, circular, and then we try to make sense of it, how our consciousness could at all make sense of us returning. But there is a moment in the Nietzsche book by Heidegger where he very clearly says that, this is on page 356 in the German version, where he very clearly says that are these strange moments in all of our experiences that we have every day where all of a sudden sometimes we think, I have been here. This has already happened. And it has been what it was. Now, we can, of course, be very rationalistic about it and say, oh, that's a deja vu, and deja vus happen when you lack oxygen in the brain, and we can actually put you in a machine where we, you know, we can sort of simulate a deja vu, and then we can show that areas of the brain, they light, they light up purple, and then it looks a bit different, and therefore, that's just the brain uh, making a mistake. It's a bit too slow. It doesn't process the information. But okay, you can think of yourself as a machine. You're nothing but sort of, you're nothing but processes in your brain you're nothing but uh neurons shooting around okay if, if that's who you want to be of course i mean that's just basic nihilism right that that's actually a very sad nihilism too because you've reduced yourself to absolutely nothing to even less than a machine and now what however when heidegger says that are these strange moments what he's pointing to is for these ecstatic possibilities that we see that already always Everything already has been. But that doesn't mean that we become backwards, backwards looking, right? This is only possible to see this very clearly, how time is actually structured ecstatically, is when we look ahead in a, in a way of, of, of the halcyon bird. That means we look ahead and we see that what has happened or what is about to happen what is about to happen, what will happen, has already happened by virtue of the eternal recurrence of the same. And that is Amor Fati. Amor Fati is not just I, I, everything that happens to me, I just say yes to it indifferently. No, that's not what it is. It means to love what's necessary. And what is necessary isn't just what happens to you personally, but what is necessary is that which is to come, which by the very law of the eternal recurrence of the same has already happened. And it's already living. It's already moving through us in history. And that is, that's the fate aspect. And if you love that, if there is a deep love for what is about to happen, only then can there be proper change, proper actual reversal proper actual because you already see it you already see what has happened you see it about to happen and it is possible then to come back and it has to do with language it has to do with language there's a movie recent film from i think 2017 called arrival where aliens come and they have a different language of a non-linear language of a symbolic language so they have to show it in that movie uh it, it's it's still it's a film so it lacks 
you know, it, it suffers from what, what films often suffer from, which is a certain linearity in themselves, but it plays with it. It plays with that ext- ecstasy of time. And by the way, Werner Herzog calls film the most ecstatic artistic medium that he knows. And because t- films can actually play with temporality because they, they can begin with what looks like the past, but it's actually the future. And this is what Arrival does. It is through the language of the aliens that they give to human beings, to researchers in that film, that they begin to see the future. So in language that is possible, and that's what the language of being in time does, that is what the language often of Nietzsche does. It is unsettling. It is putting us in a different state where we can appreciate the eternal recurrence of the same is how time itself moves. It is not a thought experiment. And Amor Fati then means the sheer and pure love of everything that is about to happen because it already has happened. <laughs>